ePod Studios. One has no idea he's awake. And it's not much of a surprise. <laughs> the other is just realizing what it takes to get up at 4.30. Do I need to be here? It's Toucher and Hardy. Shows you how together this whole operation is. On 98.5 The Sports Hub. It's uh, apropos music on Toucher and Hardy, brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Make every moment more with FanDuel. Uh, news breaks on the uh, Felger and Maz after show, and I'll tell you what happens is, and how I know, is that uh, this is where I found that Jim Murray had pulled his name out of contention for the uh, co-hosting gig here. But I do know that when they do the after show now what is the after show is the after show on facebook or is it on uh our our web page it's facebook, on facebook facebook live okay i don't know why they do it it's got to be monetary there's got to be they got to make money doing it but felger all- said yesterday that it counts toward his digital goal mm. so he gets credit for digital by doing the facebook live thing once a week does our instagram count towards our digital no uh, no it's so why does Facebook thumbs Live? Down, big thumbs down from Jamelli. Uh, Felger said yesterday in Facebook Live it was part of his contract. So he gets a bonus for doing it. All right. Well, because if I mean if it helped me get the bonus, I'd do ten minutes after the show once a week. Anyway, they're not restricted, Hardy, Would by you? the rules that that the government airwaves, the FCC, see terrestrial radio, which is the dumbest name for it. I don't as opposed to the. The fancy uh, technology of satellite radio that doesn't work in the parking garage. <laughs> uh, th- uh, and where we're, our uh, airwaves are, are controlled by the government, the FCC, and in the wisdom of the government, they've said from uh, the hours of uh, whatever seven in the morning until like seven at night, you are not to say the seven dirty words which George Carlin made up, and they just mm-hmm. said, "Sure, yeah. that sounds right." <laughs> the, the comedian did a bit on it, and that's seriously how the government has chosen to regulate the airwaves: is they just went sure. Like, George Carlin said, here's the words you can't say in a bit. And they went, that sounds about where we'll stand. Yeah, mm-hmm. Carlin gave this way more thought than we ever did. Fine. Yeah, like, so there you go. And so it's it's not so bad anymore, but it's because you're more likely to have a group of people come after you than the government. But there was a time there, 20 years ago yesterday, I believe, where when Justin Timberlake exposed the booby of Janet Jackson, where the government said, you know what? And it was Colin Powell's kid. He's just like, you know what's going to happen is I'm going to go crazy and and do what's never been done before and start cracking down on what you say and it's going to be my interpretation of what you say is going to be the be all end all in terms of if you're going to owe me money tipper gore had something to do with that beforehand too when she was uh, pushing for the parental advisory lyrics and you know starting to you know crack down on what was acceptable and what wasn't you know who took that on head on d snyder from twisted sister he said i'm going to come in front of congress you think of me as a wild-haired rock star who says we're not going to take it well i'm going to sit down and be relatively uh eloquent yes um so you said you would do this for 10 minutes you know once a week if it counted towards some kind of a yeah, like monetary if, bonus if they said we'll give you t- we'll give you we'll throw a few g's at you if, you if you if you knock this around would you do it for 34 minutes as that is how long this went on for last night uh, sitting there with none other than Jay Stu. Fred get, Toucher, I'm going to kill you. If we got Jay Stu, I would do it for two hours. <laughs> I'd, I'd do a, a marathon. Well, Jay Stu came out yeah. firing yesterday on the, yeah. uh, on the uh, what the hell they call it? Uh, Felger and Maz After Show. After Show? That's what it's called? It's called the After Show because it's after the show. Not Off-air to be confused, show. Not to be confused with Inside the Ring. Off-air show. So... Uh, We're going to take you inside the ring. Jay Stu came out firing. He knew he had a platform. He had a uh, microphone wide open, and it was. It felt like for large chunks of it, Felger interviewing Jay Stu, and this is one of the first things yeah. that Jay Stu came He's out He's like, with. Mean Gene, and I was like, Hogan. Hey, Mean Gene, know your role. Interview me on the star. Say mercy. Yes, yeah, say it. You can't. You're a cat. That is the doornail. <laughs> he wanted $4 million a year, which was more than Billy O'Brien was being paid. And the Patriots told him to go f*** themselves. Ah. 
Oh, oh, yeah, they can swear. Oh, here we got go. that right. Take that. Take wow. that. It's a pay-per-view. This ain't raw, baby. It's a pay-per-view. I'm dropping. Have it's pause. unscripted. It's still a story. I have to hold my hand, tongue on the air. Now I can really let it rip. Oh, man. Now I'm like, you know what I'm like? The Hard Foundation. <laughs> Why? Because they were Buster filthy. Brown. Okay. They were filthy. I'm like a junkyard dog. Okay. I got a chain around my neck that you can lead me on. So uh, I'm like George Jerry and Little Steel. I'm eating turnbuckle swears. <laughs> he was a uh, football coach where we grew up. Yeah, <laughs> the free press did an article on him for no reason once a year. What? George the, Animal what is Jersey Animal on? Steel? Okay, you don't know. I, gotta, I have so no I'll idea explain. what you're now talking about. Now we got to do it. Now I got to do it. Jersey Animal Steel apparently, for some like hick town in Michigan, was the head football coach, of the, was the varsity football coach. So once a year in the free press, like around Thanksgiving, there would be this profile on George the Animal Steel and how, you know, deep down he wasn't an animal. Okay. Like the turnbuckle eating, that was just... That was, that, that was, was an act. act. Like, wow. It, it was in real work. life, he can function. Oh, okay. And be a football coach. I never would have put that together. His brother lived right around the corner from us. Looked really? A, looked more like a wrestler than George the Animal Steel did. He was taller and more muscular. Well, George the Animal Steel did not look like a wrestler. He no. just was a fat old guy that just ate the turnbuckle. I mean, he goes, I'm going to eat stuffing. And that's how, and, and, you know, like the stuffing of a turnbuckle. Right. God, right. Basically, you're going to be screaming, ouch. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I gave you a, 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 you know what, Twister? If this was the after show, I could say it. <laughs> You're censored, a booby Twister, but you know what I meant. Yes. So with the tea, cassava. <laughs> I'm talking melons. Jay Stu got things going with the. Go f- himself. Whoa! Uh, Whoa! Oh! Hey, take that! Whoa! Go f- himself. So that he got things going. That broke the seal for Felger, who then yeah, felt Felger because I because when because uh, and I'm not being too cool. I'd, I'd watch the I like Felger and Mezzo, that's all the time, but but from what I've gleaned from this, Felger really lets it rip. Like he's saying, I'm swearing there ain't nobody's business how much I'm swearing. With Bill Belichick there, that was still a story. Like I've been saying a million times, four and thirteen with Belichick as your coach is still a story. Mm-hmm. Four and thirteen with Gerard Mayo and Alex Van Pelt is not a story. No one's going to give a f- Whoa. You know how much this guy has to hold back on the air? It'd like on the on the air, he'd be like, no one would care about... He'd, he'd use broken Yiddish. <laughs> That's true. I've he uses that. Yiddish very wrong. <laughs> He's terrible at Yiddish. Schmitz is my favorite. Yeah, well, it's not even right. <laughs> you could be, you could stand, you could be in the Brook, you could be in Brooklyn. The, as the day is long, you could be at every motel in Brooklyn. You would never hear anyone say Schmenzer. He even shortens it. He calls it a Schmenz. <laughs> yeah, he's. <laughs> so then they. Start... Hardy contends he's half Jewish, but I don't. I don't know if that's. Is I, that right? I'm just telling the, you, it's just like... the good half. Uh, of course, <laughs> I'm telling you. I think it's a Seinfeld thing where he's doing it just to use bad Yiddish. Okay. Well, you then know they... I'm very familiar with the Jewish community, John. Even more familiar with you than you. <laughs> yep. All right, one more, are. and then we got a break and come back. All right, but let's do then, one then more. Then they get a little bit in a tandem, then they're just feeding off each other. I have a good friend who's a high-ranking official on a Western Division team who yeah. texted me, these f***ing cowards yeah. referring to LeBron James and Anthony Davis. They'll be healthy for Madison Square Garden on Saturday night. They didn't want to play tonight in Boston. That's what Seriously. it came down to. F-ing so they just, they just came up with this one. <laughs> Why is this so crazy? Effing <laughs> cowards. Hey, I have a friend. How? First of all, how do you have a friend? <laughs> it was a high-ranking Western Conference. Like, do you think Jay Stu like goes out of town and like puts on? He's like James Bond, Stu, James Stu. <laughs> like, oh, like, how does he know these people? He met him at WrestleMania or something. That's my bet. Like, is everyone like is WrestleMania like the Senior Bowl for like uh, yes. Western Conference executives? I don't know, but I can. Met, where else would he have found him? I have a He's I, Walter Mitty. He's got a secret life going on this whole time. Yeah, I have karate friend. chop. Yeah, I got a friend. He's high up in the CIA. Yeah, I got a friend at Goldman Sachs. He's saying buy a. He's saying buy high, sell low. He's saying turn the market on its head. Yeah, he's saying short. Uh, he's saying short Amazon this month. The way these guys are dropping the f bombs though, it's like uh, we're gonna do this one deal. That's it. Don't okay, give you. How's that? No one's gonna give a. F- you, f- you. That's it. Let it go at that. These f- cowards. 
I mean, they, I couldn't tell who was who, who was yeah. Scarface and who was hot. Yeah. All right, when we come back, there is so much more from the after show. There's yes. lots of swearing, and also Felger shares his affinity for terrible, terrible, terrible things. Yeah, he does. Awful things. If you, did, if you liked Felger, get ready to hate him, is all I got to say. <laughs> All right, we will return. Backstagecountry.com, your online home for all things country music. Award-winning movies often have incredible soundtracks, and many of those have gone on to become country gold. We've picked our top five country songs that have been nominated for an Oscar. Text OSCAR to 45911 to see if your favorite made the list on Backstagecountry.com. Text OSCAR to 45911, and we'll send the link straight to your phone. In the office, in your car, in your funny pajamas, this is how Boston sports fans start their day. I bet you're just jealous. Toncher and Hardy on 98.5 The Sports Hub. There is a, a couple of uh, ne'er do wells on the staff. Fred Toucher, I'm going to kill you. By the well, this isn't going to help. Uh, by, by the name of James Stewart and uh, uh, Michael Felger, they do a. Uh, there's a uh, after show, uh, after show show on Facebook Live, off air show on Facebook Live. Everyone should watch it because they are not restricted by the government at this point. They're allowed to do whatever they want. They can finally shoot from the hip. It gets very racist. Beat it, Buster Brown. Yeah. They finally can. All the constraints. <laughs> all... Is that how he refers to people of color? Yeah, that's his, that's his <laughs> sneaky way. Oh, boy. It's like when people do what you think is the okay symbol, but apparently it's like some growling cry to Nazis. Beat it, Buster Brown. <laughs> yeah. That's that's his way of saying get out of my town. <laughs> he just stands at the at the border and says, "Beat it, Buster, Beat it, Buster Brown." Brown. <laughs> He's his own border patrol. He's very, very, very. Ups- if you don't know James Stu's very upset about immigration. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm making it all up. It's not true. But what they do do is swear. Is that they are not constricted by the rules of the oh, airwaves? No. Oh no! So this shows you what Felger and Maz would sound like, right? If if you could just swear, or mm-hmm. or just Jay Stu. But so I will tell you this: another Celtics point. Yeah. Huh? So there's been a lot of shitting on Joe Mazzulla lately. Oh, did he? <laughs> yeah, Fred. My favorite is like the the S. You almost should be able to say the S word. Like it wouldn't even shock me if people said the S word on the air. Like it's it's a very light swear. In fact. In, on basic cable, you're allowed to do it whatever you want, but the general rule that the networks have been following is you can say the S word, but not the F word. Yes, the S word. There's something. Isn't that funny? Yeah, that it just seems a little. Mm-hmm. And know? the and the S word is going to lend itself to the scatological references that they really frown upon. Whereas the F word is used in many more parts of speech, I think, than the S word is, and you could get away with that more. I don't know. I never speak of anything scatological, so I, I would have to really think about it. You'd have to well, direct then, me where to go. Well, then you won't like this. Stu, again, keeping in mind legal ramifications. Yeah. Uh, is Wait, stop. That- you know Stu's about to drop. He knows Stu too well mm-hmm. that, that Stu drops bombs. Can you imagine having, if I went John, Stu's such a powder keg with so much information and so much inside information and so many Western Conference friends that are in very high places. Can you imagine if I had to say to you, John, John, be careful. Like, like look, <laughs> I, I know you. You're about to blow up the whole effing system. Uh, everyone back up. John, well, listen. <laughs> listen, we don't, this, we don't want a whole uh, right. War of the World situation going on here. We right. don't want, like, you have the power. You ever seen the video for Just by, by Radiohead where the guy hears something and then he's just laying in the street and everyone comes by? Like, you have the power to, like, disrupt society like we've never seen. Yeah, if anyone's going to cost us the FCC license, it's Wallach. That's, he's going to be the. <laughs> well, that's what Felger's Wallach. saying to Jay yes. Stewie. He's like, listen, yes. this is an open forum. You can swear, but. We know you got info that's going to get our asses in jail. Right. That's right. That's Still, again, keeping in mind legal ramifications. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is- what? What? 
Yeah, they're not under my porch. Yeah, no. <laughs> Ignore the smell. Nah. The ramifications. What? The well in the woods? No, there's no bones in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't there. <laughs> this is all in theory if I did it. Right. No, no. Those are animal carcasses. No, no, no. I, no, no. I had a sloppy hot dog. No, no. That's not <laughs> blood. No, no, no. I was just at the butcher shop. Sure. No, no, no. The dogs are following me because I'm nice. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. I don't know Doug at the morgue. No. <laughs> it's not Defecation. a my phone. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, hey. hey. God. Defecation part of the Vince McMahon story? Yes. <laughs> oh, he's all he, in. He just yes. perked us. He perked yes, up. Yes, it is. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Is defecation part of the Vince McMahon story? Oh, yeah. Oh, defecation yeah. Defecation part of the Vince McMahon story? Yeah. Just the hot part. <laughs> Just the sexy part. <laughs> no. You said not to be titillating. I can't believe it took you this long to ask me. Finally, I'm off air. <laughs> Finally, I can shoot. You're From in. the hip, I mean. So there was a text message that there was a setup for a three-way and one of... Vince's fetishes was he wanted to shit on said employee. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even positive about that. Just let that stand where it is. Jesus. Uh, don't play that again. Oh, no. Ah. All right. Um, somebody in Gosh, the chat. Gosh. So, Fred, so, you know, in the chat, you can ask them questions and request they speak on things. And at some point in the chat, someone asked Felger, uh, who is a uh, widely known to be a fan of the Grateful Dead, Oof. what he thought of the Grateful Dead going into residency in Las Vegas. Because the Grateful Dead fans are so hardcore that the main guy dying has no implication on how much they'll spend or call them still the Grateful Dead. Yeah. Dude, they weren't the dead once Pigpen left this mortal coil. All right, here we go. Here's Felger babbling about crap and not what they just said. The dead doing a Vegas residency, like a cheesy lounge act. As opposed to the real way they've kept it cool with the t line of ties and the T markers and like, the ball markers and everything else they sell to uh, rich white people. That Yeah, they've this is too much. They've gone too far at this point. You know, putting John Mayer in the band, who that was... You know, it was they were very staying close to their hippie ideals. This is this is the breaking point. Felger, you know, Felger is just about you know the parking lot scene, man. It's not even about getting in the show. It's about opening your mind. It's about that trading. It's about the the commerce, man. It's about just living that life, right? It's and yes, you can you can welcome other people into the fold, like John Mayer, like other counterculture icons, like Bruce Hornsby. You can get them in there and get them up on stage. That's just the way it is. Yeah, this is just the way. It is. I like this is too far from Felger. Finally, the dead have sold out. Finally, the Grateful Dead. It's not like, I mean, they literally, Jerry Garcia's, if you Google Jerry Garcia merchandise, I bet you you couldn't, I bet you you couldn't get every piece of merchandise out of your mouth by 10 o'clock in the morning. In, in real garbage. Like, people make fun of Kiss. I bet you that Grateful Dead dumb skull that just tells me that you're an, an awful automaton that just is cho chosen to listen to noise that no one really likes. And and I've had dead fans like go to me like, dude, I like, you know, I know you crap on the dead. And I'll go, I'll go, do you listen to them? And they'll go, no. <laughs> Their studio albums sell two copies except for Touch of Grey when they made a video. Like, no one owns a dead studio album. They're, they might as well not exist. Fred Toucher, I'm going to kill you. All right, Jay Stu. I'm not the one who, who said the naughty thing about Vince McMahon. You're about to go to jail. Yeah. The dead doing a Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hey, guys. I have a friend who's a very high-ranking West Coast exec. Meow, 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 meow. All right, very good. All right, here we go. Here's him <laughs> with the dead. Meow, 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 shut up. Yeah. You'll be meowing in heaven. The dead doing a Vegas residency, like a cheesy lounge act, not the Grateful Dead, right? Like, that's not 
in the Grateful Dead ethos. Wrong! No, playing Fenway is the <laughs> Grateful Dead ethos. Uh, taking money from major corporations to sponsor their tours is the Grateful Dead ethos. <laughs> As opposed to MetLife Stadium, which is, like, really, like, playing Woodstock. By the way, this is, like, at the 20-minute mark of the off-air show. And, boy, did this go on for a long time. Yeah, Hardy was no fan of listening to this. I got to tell you that. He did not like going 34 through 34 minutes. In the Grateful Dead ethos. Wrong! Wrong, wrong, wrong. Perfect fit. The sphere is a perfect fit for the dead, and I'll tell you why. The Grateful Dead has always been, always been about trying to push, uh, push the Make money, yes. They've always <laughs> been putting forth the most minimal effort in uh, getting by on lack of talent, but uh, some ethos that, uh, the ethos of making money and uh, pulling the wool over dumbasses' eyes. First, uh, push the boundaries, uh, not just audio-wise, audio, uh, audio wise, but visually. They, the Grateful Dead, quick history lesson. You ready? Oh, no. All right, no, so no, yeah, they, no, they push no. it, they're pushing the, the envelope visually by standing there and being very old. I'll tell you this. You know what they should do with the sphere, and this would be a great last act. And I told you this in the post-show meeting yesterday before we even knew there was going to be an off-show. Off air show. So, the, if you don't know, the Grateful Dead are doing a residency at that sphere thing where they can make these like incredible 4K visuals. Like it's a globe, and inside of it, they can make it like super. I don't know. If you listen to the show, you heard all about the YouTube one. Online. Yeah. Yeah. Too much, if you ask me, Jace, too. I mean, I I get it. You saw you two at the sphere. Let's. You're let's, going to be screaming ouch. I was. It was ouch, my ears. But you know what they should do is that Bob Weir, the awful, awful scum that is Bob Weir should stand up and he they should go you know what we've made so much money off these idiots let's just destroy their lives knowing that they're all going to be on LSD they're all going to be on powerful hallucinogens and that you have the power to project any image i would say here's what i need from you i need identification for you to get in the show because you're going to have to be over 21 it's a brilliant I would, idea i would take the identification i love this i would look up i'd have them google all the information of everyone's going to be there then once they're in the building, we start playing, uh, you know, Uncle Tom's Cabin or whatever the hell show song we have. <laughs> That's Warren, but you get the gist. And then I have on the sphere walls AI of the people's parents turning into monsters saying, you failed. <laughs> you are going to die. You are going to rot forever. I hate you. And it's just yeah. the people's parents swirling and screaming at them while they d- dissolve into a psychedelic hell. <laughs> Wouldn't that be the greatest thing the, ever? The song you would be, be looking for is Hell in a Bucket. That'd be perfect. I don't care what song it is. It all sounds like crap. Is this the uh, Grateful Dead? This is... Uh, is this when they got the disco influence? The shakedown, yeah. Is this when they were like, you know what? Disco's taking off. Let's make a really bad disco song. And Hell in a Bucket and, is from that Touch of Grey album. Oh, well, oh is that what ju- it's for? You just exposed yourself. That's not even real dead, man. Okay. But, I mean, you have the ability Damn there. Because everyone, oh, no. everyone at the sphere is going to be someone who's taking hallucinogens for the first time in a really long time. Because it's going to cost $10 million bucks to get in there. So it's going to be like a bunch of investment bankers, like total scum. In there, taking LSD or taking... They'll probably take ayahuasca or something that, you know, they they sent their servants down to Bali to get. And so it's going to be their first psychedelic experience in a long time. They're going to be all revved up about it. And you have the awesome ability to just, like, psychologically ruin them forever. Yeah. All the they, all the Trustafarians doing the safe hallucinogenics. I'll have my assistant pick it up. She's really good. Yeah, this She'll is pure. Good like, wait, like, yeah, I, I don't feel comfortable, like, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is what felt like so much. No, what? There's not someone who exists who likes this song. By the way, if you put them on a lie detector, there's not a person that exists that like this song. If I told you this was Boys to Men and played you this song, you'd be like, "This is awful." But all of a sudden, it's a Grateful Dead, and you, you know, got high and and uh, and met a, some smelly girl that was performed on you. Now all of a sudden, it's the best thing ever. But I'm telling you, that sphere has the opportunity to, like, really psychologically ruin people. In fact, they should do, you know what, the Army should do an experiment like they did in the 60s and just see if they can indoctrinate them into killing machines. Well, this is what <laughs> Felger talked about when he gave his history lesson on the Grateful Dead. Mm. Oh. The Grateful Dead started 
as a house band for acid tests. Yes, yes, yes acid, acid tests. Test. Yeah, that's the only reason anyone would listen. Yes, acid yes. tests. <laughs> Whoa. And they had to confine people in a room or pay them to be there in order to get yes. them to listen Owsley, to the Grateful Dead. Owsley made LSD. <laughs> Owsley was a famous LSD manufacturer. And they would he would do these things where you would take a sugar cube and you would eat it that he'd put liquid acid on. And everyone would trip, and then that was the only way the Grateful Dead could get anyone to see him play. That would be like me going, you know what? Hardy and I have a new band. We just happen to have a ton of heroin. So if you want to come by, like it's heroin, like we'll give you heroin. And everyone sits around, and they do the heroin. And the price of having getting all the free heroin is us playing. Right. So the Grateful Dead exist because Owsley figured out how to make acid. And, and they wanted to psychologically torture the people who took it to see what effect it would have. But on the them. only way they could get them to do anything was to is it, free drugs, free drugs. Yes. Now you'll have to put up with us. <laughs> and then people enjoyed the LSD experience so much and associated it with the Grateful Dead. The Grateful Dead don't exist without LSD. I got news for you. Fogger's right there. Go ahead, Matt. Yeah, so Fred, you're absolutely right. There's a book called the electric Kool-Aid acid test. I've which read talks it. about all of that stuff. Okay, so, so, okay. Oh, you have read it. So that, you'll know what I'm going to say, Fred. And that is, and I am not a Grateful Dead fan, but the Grateful Dead were innovators of that time because you recall from that book the wall of sound. Do you not? They didn't do that, though. They had a the guy who... They made the wall of sound. They, they didn't oh, make okay. it, though. They a guy... guy it. They just played through it. What you're talking about is there is a guy that was in the Grateful Dead camp. Okay. All right, okay. There was a guy in the Grateful Dead camp that created this, like, revolutionary audio system, and they played through it, so congratulations. I'm Thomas Edison because I'm using a, my phone. I, like, I'm Steve Jobs because I got an iPhone. I mean, they play. They happen to know a guy that made something cool. Like, they didn't invent acid. Owsley was making it. Please, they're not innovators. They're innovative in marketing. Mm-hmm. They marketed themselves. They came up with a nifty logo. That made you, that you all own crap on. Acid. Dropping acid. Did the government started tooling around with acid. In the late 50s, early 60s. Late 50s, early 60s. And they had a lab out in the Bay Area by San Francisco. <laughs> Can you, imagine, so they put- can you imagine Jay Stu is like, just sit by me, Jay. Jay Stu, just sit by me. You you talk me. Everything's cool, man. This is all going to end. This is just temporary, dude. You're in a good place. I know this high-ranking West Coast executive. Hey, remember WrestleMania? Remember the camel clutch? Hey, Felger, everything's going to be cool. Jay Stu, Jay Stu, I think there's some cops coming up to us. Beat it, Buster Brown. Oh. All right. Well, there you go. The after show is available. Whatever, off air show. (laughs) And so they put out ads. All right. Every time you play the Grateful Dead in anything, I'm just so fascinated. It's bad whatever genre they're trying to do. This is bad blues music. You just played before this bad disco music. And these it's kids. all just a bad version. It's just all them taking something else and ruining it. Boy, are they bad. And they're objectively bad. I, I, they're just so bad. All right, forget it. These kids, when they came out of there, said... All right, okay, I can't That was the greatest <laughs> thing I've ever done in my life. Felger is obviously a and huge fan of hallucinogen. Be on acid, and they would f*** with you. Yeah. That's how he comes up with his takes. All right, well, thank you, Jay Stu. You made my day. All right, uh, we will return. Fred Toucher, I'm going to kill you. No, you won't. Here are the headlines. Backstagecountry.com, your online home for all things country music. <laughs> Lainey Wilson is on a roll. She's delivering great music and teaming up with some of country's hottest acts. Text Lainey to 45911 to see which four Lainey Wilson collabs have us talking at BackstageCountry.com. Text Lainey to 45911 to get a link to the list sent right to your phone from BackstageCountry.com. It's the all-new Toucher and Hardy. Whatever, man. On 98.5 The Sports Hub. 
Hey, we are Toucher and Hardy in this hour. The Sports Hub is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Make every moment more with FanDuel. All right. Last night, the Celtics, I mean, you probably thought you were uh, hot stuff. You probably, uh, p- if you put money on the Celtics uh, early in the day and then you found out, oh, look, uh, LeBron James and Anthony Davis aren't playing, you probably thought, wow, I got a, a very reasonable spread. It, you know, now I've, I've played Vegas. If you had tickets for the game, you were probably very upset. Yes. Unless you were my son who wears Austin Reeves' shoes, mm-hmm. his signature shoe, you heard about which is that from yesterday. a Japanese company. What's that, what's that called again? I don't know. Oh, okay. God, I, for, I, I forget. I, forget. Yeah, I don't yesterday. know. It's a name I've never heard of. Like, he's got, like, I don't know why I find it so fascinating. Austin Reeves has a signature shoe. And uh, it's from Rigor. a Rigoror or something okay. like that. All right. Which is a swear word in Japanese. <laughs> But uh, last night, the, office, uh, yeah. the Lakers uh, beat the Celtics 114-105, to 105, and Austin Reeves went off. He had 32 points. Uh, and uh, while like, you excuse this loss from the Celtics. I, I, no, it's inexcusable to lose to the Lakers without LeBron or Anthony Davis, but it was obvious what was going on. I mean, the, the All-Star break is right around the corner. They're playing their fourth game in six nights, all at home. And this is one of those they thought they were going to walk in and win. There haven't been a lot of those this season. Last night, there wasn't a lot of effort at the beginning. They were as sloppy as sloppy could be. They turned the ball over eight times in the first quarter. That's unheard of. There are a lot. The Celtics were fully staffed. The Lakers are missing their best two players, and the Celtics lost. And Austin Reeves got hot and stayed hot for most of the night. It's one of those games, and we've said it many times before, you're in the dog days of winter, you know, and Jalen Brown has said it in the last couple of weeks. We just got to get to the All Star break. You got to maintain focus. Last night they had no focus. And now, Jalen Brown in particular was bad. But what did you time. think? The I wonder. See, because usually I would go that uh, you're, you, why would they not be focused, particularly on this game? It's the Lakers at home on TNT. Like they're aware. Obviously, you're aware. You know that, John. They're aware yeah. when they're on national television. Anyone would be. Yeah. Anyone would be. But I do you think there's a part of them, and this just occurred to me, that and think these are like kids, like Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum are, are like still 26, very young 27, men. Yep, uh, twenty seven is maybe not, but twenty twenty six. I'll still call you a young man. Do you think that maybe it's like the Pro Bowl that now that like no one plays in the Pro Bowl and it's gotten down to like the Baker Mayfields of the world that when they found out that Anthony Davis and LeBron weren't playing, oh yeah, they were like, well. Like now, I feel like a loser for playing. I think I think there is a certain factor. Yes, that that without it, LeBron and Anthony Davis in the game, they approach that much differently than they would have otherwise. Okay, yes. so that that's fair. The All Star break thing, nonsense. They yeah. have five more games before the All Star break, and yeah, it's their third game in four nights. But they had the night off the night before. The Lakers are in town. It's a TNT game. That's a game you should be up for. What I don't think some Celtics fans want to admit is they're not good against teams that have some cachet about them. Whether it's the Golden State Warriors, we saw them lose to them. You lose to a LeBron and AD-less Lakers team? Why? Uh, I, I don't know, but they have trouble against teams that have swagger and that is what's happened to him before, and it happened to him again last night. And the swagger came from Austin Reeves? I mean, it's it's an issue for this team to lose a game as badly as they did to a team like that last night for some reason that I hope it's not psychological, but I can't chalk it up to All-Star break. They've got... They, They've got a lot of time before the All Star break. They have, I think, the fact that it was third game in four nights, fourth game in six nights, and you're at home, you're comfortable, you're relaxed, and the All Star break is around the corner. I think all of those factored in, and they didn't start the game well. And without any stars on the other side, I think all of those things were contributing factors. Like you look at the roster, it should be no contest. Well, Austin Reeves, I felt bad for when Holiday was press it was up on him because right. Austin Reeves can't handle the ball, and and I uh, actually felt bad for him. It reminded me of like playing AAU, like when we would be up against a, a very good team and I couldn't get the ball over half court without it getting yeah. taken away from me. Like yeah. Austin Reeves, like if if Holiday is like checking Reeves 
like one on one. Like Austin Reeves couldn't get couldn't get by him at three quarters court. It yeah. was it was making me uncomfortable. So <laughs> them not trying might be something that's going on because the idea that Austin Reeves went off like that without being able to make his own shot. Yeah, is is really uh, something else. I disagree with the swagger thing too. I mean, Minnesota has as much swagger as anybody. They're the best team in the West. Well, Celtics the beat them player. in overtime the last time. I mean, they. I just think it was one of the harmonic convergence of factors. Yeah, I wouldn't be. I concerned think it made, about it. If they, if you play that game, if you could simulate that game again uh, through a computer and have the exact same setup as you had last night, the Celtics win eight or nine of ten of those. Eight or nine of ten. I just they might win ten of ten if you did it. But none, uh, if you played ten more, none of your factors resonate with me, though. None of the fa- not yours necessarily. And now yours. He's calling you a jerk. No, I, I, I just, know. I know. But Real, to Wallach's uh, credit, it, to Wallach's credit, he did call this not without LeBron James and without Anthony Davis, but yesterday, Wallach said. And the Lakers don't have a lot to give. They they are stretched thin as it is. They don't have a lot of good players on that roster. Now watch, they'll come in here and beat the Celtics by 15 tonight. But they're not nearly as good as the Celtics are. I don't care if LeBron's on that team or not. Right now, all, all NBA players are marking time until the All-Star break. All right, so this is continuing as... Can you be right and wrong at the same time? <laughs> That's why I did it. I covered my bases I mean, can expertly. You, can you say nothing... <laughs> And at the same time, say everything that yeah. needs to be said. I got it right. And wrong. And I said, now watch. The Lakers will come in. They were up by 15 in the fourth quarter. Oh, they were. And yeah. we'll, t- we'll t- count that as a win as well. Damn I, right. I John's think- inability to have a cognizant point and stick to it is finally paid <laughs> off. It didn't bother you at all that the Celtics suck against a team that has one marquee player on it, even if that player is sitting on the bench and watching. Doesn't bother me. Does it bother oh, that, you that, that after the game? It should bother you because the, the the teams that tend to be in it toward the end of the season in conference finals and NBA championships, I think, have that one or two marquee team, players. I think this team is extremely talented. They didn't play well last night. It's a it's a hiccup. Is uh, all last Barclay night. Barkley called uh, Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. He said they weren't tough enough. Uh, I will tell you this: one thing that uh, really did bother me is after the game, TNT went out to Austin Reeves and they were like, uh, "Hi, you know LeBron, huh? Like he was really in your ear." Oh yeah, yeah. Like basically, like like they brought up LeBron, and I just so badly wanted Austin Reeves to go. You know what? He didn't play dumbass. I'm it pretty was the good. Austin Reeves show today. I, I I play. I've represented my country in international play. I'm I'm pretty good. Do you see these yeah. shoes I wear? They're a Japanese company <laughs> that's taking a chance on the white kid from Oklahoma. <laughs> The Celtics just see LeBron James sitting there, and it doesn't matter. They see him, and they wilt. These f***ing cowards. That's yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Frauds is what they are. Yeah. Uh, can I ask you something? Why is Carl Anthony Towns an all-star? Uh, he's had a pretty good year. Yeah. He's um, one of the best players. There's no the Anthony West. Edwards, but. No, Anthony Edwards should be a starter. Why is Anthony Edwards not a starter, Jonathan? Uh, I take a look at the starters. Okay, well, do you know off the top of your head? Because I do. Go ahead, read them. I don't know off the top of my head. The starters, I know Doncic is one. Who else is there? <laughs> I, I thought, thought Who Fred else? had it pulled up in front of him. I like, do have it pulled up in front of him. <laughs> you think I know the All-Star game by heart? <laughs> All right, let's hear What's it. wrong with you? <laughs> it's not the biggest stars. <laughs> that's, that's the biggest insult you could hurl at me. Yeah, but I you have think, committed, I, I think I've committed, committed it to memory? The, the NBA I'm busting John's starters. balls. John would think that I know, and then he'd feel bad because he <laughs> follows basketball so Go closely. Ahead. Who are they? Well, I have it in front of me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Doncic. Yeah. Durant. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Gillis Alexander, who's been great. LeBron. And Jokic. Who are you, you, you replacing? Who are you replacing? I would put Anthony Edwards as the captain and take LeBron off that thing. Okay. You don't think Anthony Edwards has been better than LeBron this year? Anthony Edwards has had another good year. I haven't looked at LeBron's numbers, but I assume they're decent. Well, they're a 500 team, and they just won without him. Lillard's a starter in the East. Yeah. Hunchy manchy. Yeah. Yeah. What does your high, co- high flute and West Coast executive think about that? <laughs> Jimmy Stewart. Go f*** himself. Oh. <laughs> That's how you guys talk. You guys are like the, the businessmen from Houston that George had. 
How long is Embiid out, Johnny Wall game? He's out through at least a weekend, and then they're going to reevaluate him. It looks, it's a meniscus injury. So it's not going to be the season or anything? Right now they're saying, no, it's not the season. Okay. Because not people season. Were, were talking, like, really, like, that it was over. It looked bad when it happened. But he walked off. He did. This he, this narrative is, has been pissing me off, too. Like, he was forced out there because... He's so consumed with getting the MVP, and the stipulations are you have to right. play in 65 oh, so, games. So now we're yeah. crapping on guys for playing? And he put, yes. yes. Uh, he that's, put, that's isn't it odd the way it works? Well, so, so crapping whoever, on the league for requiring who, 65 games for well, postseason that's, award. That's outrageous. God to forbid. Ask, <laughs> to ask <laughs> professional athletes in their 20s to play 65 games? I mean, add it up. You play 30 minutes a night 65 times. I mean, that's 30 hours of of work a year. And, and of course they're all playing every every single day of the week. I mean, you're talking about <laughs> over 30 hours of of athletic activity a year. I mean, who does that? I mean, that's like running 10 marathons over the course of a year. Yeah. Or it could be Joel Embiid still's not in shape, and you know I guarantee you whoever <laughs> whoever has called out Embiid for playing in the game yeah. has multiple times in their career also crapped on players for not playing in the game, and they might have gone one day Embiid shouldn't have played, the next day why is LeBron James not playing? I guarantee you they are not mutually exclusive takes. I I love that crap on Embiid for playing. He's selfish for playing. He He's selfish for playing. Play. He wants the MVP too bad. I also like the idea of wanting the MVP too bad. If they were, if they had won like ten games and he was going off sixty a night because he was just feeding himself and like he was going like shoot twenty five percent from the field but scoring sixty a night and they were losing, then you go, all right, well this guy's obviously trying to do something. The the idea that like you know he wants to win the MVP, this guy wants to be good. Well, and it, and if his if his knee is, this hedge fund manager is really outperforming the S and P five hundred. He who does he think he is? But just logically, that if his knee was that fragile to begin with, he was going to end up missing time either way. I mean, it, the, I saw the injury. It's like okay, someone landed on him when he was diving for a loose ball. That happens every game if you're going to dive for a loose ball and you're going to actually play the game with some aggression. So he was going to end up missing time. He was going to end up missing more time. And good news, people. He's freakishly tall. He's going to get hurt. Yeah. Your body's not supposed to be that big. I mean, let's be honest. He's going to get hurt. You, 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 these guys are are too tall. You get hurt if he's get hurt if he was an accountant walking to the water cooler. You're going to be screaming out. Shut up, James. I oh, sorry. All right, we'll be right back.